From the Oakland Hills to Jack London Square, the Port of Oakland to the Coliseum, KTVU presents Talk of the Town, an engaging conversation about the people and issues important to Oakland. Hello, I'm Dave Clark, and I thank you for joining us on Talk of the Town. I am really so glad that you're here, and I'm even happier because my guest is here. My guest is attorney John Burris. First of all, everybody knows who you are, but I'm just glad that you're here, that you made time to be here. And the first thing I want to ask, out of the blue, you are known as a giant in the legal field. Do you feel that way? Not really. I feel like um, I have a responsibility uh, that I've chosen uh, mm -hmm. as a civil rights lawyer to represent people. Uh, particularly those who have been abused in some way, either by the police or by corporations, etc. So I just kind of feel like that's what I do. That's my mission. It's a life I've chosen. I don't know and put myself on a pedestal in any way uh, in terms of my stature. I recognize that I've done a lot of good work and yeah. a lot of people rely upon what I've done and they're like, uh, get a sense that what I've done has been helpful to people uh, and set a tone and a direction mm -hmm. uh, that uh, others can follow. Uh, my biggest efforts, I think, have been training other lawyers, mm -hmm. uh, providing uh, uh, an opportunity for them to learn how to be lawyers in, in this profession and, and, and to do good work. But I don't view it in any kind of pedestal way. I just view it uh, that I'm fortunate I get to do what I'm doing, frankly. Well, just accept the fact you are on a pedestal. <laughs> and you can say it, I can. Yeah. And you and I, we know each other, and there, I'm very proud to say that I know you, know your family and all of that. And, and let's talk about, you know, we, we can talk about a lot of the legal things. I just want to put a human face mm -hmm. on you. Now, you grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in Vallejo um, uh, some years ago, of course. And mm -hmm. I, I uh, played sports there. Um, and what did I, you play? I played basketball and then ultimately ran a little track. But, okay. but my... My um, goal at always, as a little young, young man, was reading about the civil rights movement, seeing how people were leading their lives, mm -hmm. and, and I sort of had a sense that I wanted to do something beneficial, more special than, say, doing the traditional thing of just getting a job and living in town and raising a family. I really wanted more than that. Even as a young man? Even as a young man. I, and I, cause what I did was look around and see what was going on in the world. Yeah. I could see you know, the civil rights movement uh, uh, advancing on television. I couldn't understand why you had this level of discrimination. I didn't really have a real good sense of uh, the, the regional differences that existed in the world. Mm -hmm. So I was tremendously impacted, more than I can probably ever say, about what happened to uh, the African Americans uh, battling for civil rights with the use of the dogs that were placed yeah, on them yeah. uh, and, 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 and what they were battling for uh, we already sort of had, we just kind of took for granted. Yeah. You know, you could, there wasn't a question about riding the buses or going yeah. to schools, anything of that. You nature. could do that. We could do all of that. Yeah. And so, uh, but I was very much moved uh, by seeing what I saw and sort of lit a kind of kernel in me. Mm -hmm. And later on, as I ultimately became a lawyer, uh, I was in Chicago and um, I got involved in some uh, Ralph Metcalf, who was a congressman at the time. Yeah. You know, and he had a commission that he put together uh, that wanted to detail police b brutality in the city of Chicago. So I spent a summer interviewing victims of mm. police brutality uh, for the Ralph Metcalf Commission, and that sort of impacted me significantly because this wasn't then in the South, <laughs> this was in the Midwest or the North, yeah. and this is what was going on. So that kind of gave me my real entree and to the abuse that uh, police conduct and do. And it sort of was an undercurrent of a motivation for me back then. Hmm. Uh, but in Vallejo, I, uh, I, I did have humble, even though I, had, I come from a working class family, so my mother okay, and father I was both ask worked. You. My, mother, my father worked at the shipyard, my mother worked at Napa State Hospital. But, but as a young boy, I did uh, work in the, in, in the fields, uh, the, the harvesting, um, picking various levels of fruit as a way to actually make extra money. Mm -hmm. And that had an impact on me as well because it sort of said, this is kind of hard work this is. And yeah. I was pretty clear that I didn't want to do that kind of work, or right. like real hard work. So it had another impact. Another thing that I've talked about a lot, and that is a young boy um, seeing my uncles, 
you know, who were Navy guys, mm -hmm. and you know, really having a learning uh, later on that when they were in the Navy, they really didn't have good naval jobs. They they had subservient jobs. Yeah. You know, they were working in the kitchen. You know, they were shining the shoes, and I was very much offended by that. My yeah. father was in the was in the Colored Army, the Colored Air Force, and uh, I can saw I saw pictures of that. But I also saw the jobs that he had. And, and I could feel his disappointment of, of having jobs where he felt he was more qualified than, than his boss, who, who was generally a white guy, and they were all from the South. My family is from the South, yeah. uh, from Oklahoma. They were part of the Western migration, particularly after the war. So I sort of internalized a lot of that. And it really um, it affected me in terms of what happens to men, what happens to black men who try to raise families, yeah. but they had the lower level jobs. And, and so I, in my own mind's eye, I thought that I wanted to do something about that. Condition. You know, in the era that you and I grew up in, and you talked about your dad mm -hmm. and the things he experienced, did he ever talk about that? Now, m my dad was, is, is, was in the war. Mm -hmm. He was sent, he was in the Army. Mm -hmm. And among the things he did in the Army, he was sent to Germany. Mm -hmm. And he was a part of an elite group of black soldiers mm -hmm whose job was to guard captured Nazis. Right, right. The ultimate humiliation for right. Nazis. Right. He never talked about it. I found out about it after his funeral. Did your dad ever? My father never, never talked about uh, his military experience, but he didn't talk much about what um, affected him on his jobs, other than the fact that he felt that he wasn't getting promoted uh, on the jobs. But the thing that you, you, you talk about with your dad, but my uncles would, would talk about their experience in the Navy, which yeah. is kind of, Vallejo was a Navy town yeah. at the time. It was yeah. part of the, you, you weren't out here, but part, Port Chicago, you may have heard about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Well, my mother and father, that was their era. They were around during that period of time, and, and they knew a lot of the men uh, who were killed uh, during yeah. that period of time. In fact, I was reading more recently, and I saw a cousin of mine, uh, name was in the newspaper, who was part of the men who survived Port Chicago. Wow. Uh, quite amazing um, wow. for me. But So that my early background had a, a lot to do with my sense. Even on the sports team that I saw, I uh, played on, I could see how people were treated, how the white coaches treated the black players. Mm. Uh, and so I was always affected by it. You know, I did a lot of reading too. You yeah. know, I mean, Richard Wright was a major guy that, yeah. I, that I read oh, a yeah. lot about. and. I was trying to make sense of the world at large and what I was part of uh, all that period of time. So, you know, I, it, it really was something that I was really trying to find my way. Yeah. Um, now, ultimately, I, I played, and the other thing is, I played on baseball teams during that era, which is kind of odd. And I, and, I, mm. and I played on all white baseball teams. I went to an all white school uh, for the first four or five years of my life, which is surprising. Uh, because I lived in a black neighborhood, yeah. but I got singled out to go to this school in an opposite direction of the one that I lived in. Interesting. When I was a kid. That was interesting. And uh, I why, don't know that, why do you think? I, you know, I, to this day, I don't really know, but I assume it was testing in the okay. kindergarten or something right. like that. Because I immediately, by the time I went to first grade, I was transferred to another school, and I went to that school for four years. It only went to the fourth grade. and so, yeah. But that had an impact on me, too. And, hmm. and certainly uh, made me competitive with everyone. Uh, but it also gave me a chance to see the has and the have nots. Yeah. Uh, and so I was always observing that between the has and the have nots. Mm -hmm. You know, what we didn't have, although I didn't have an unhappy childhood or anything right. like that. Right, yeah, I get that. I could see that the other kids in the neighborhood that I played baseball with, yeah. you know, they, they lived in a different portion of the town. Yeah. And they had different stuff. Uh, and so. I wasn't no much um, envious of that. I was observant of it. Yeah. And yeah. and that sort of, in my own mind's eye, sort of settled in my psyche, if you will, in terms of moving forward. I want to talk to uh, about another facet of you. You're a numbers guy, and you did something. You had another career before you went into I law. I did. I, I did. I was, uh, <laughs> I'm an accountant by training. I'm an accountant by training. people may not know that. They don't know it, and uh, it's not anything I talk about. I yeah. do have a... I have a degree, a business degree, a, a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting. And so I did that um, for a couple of years. Then I went back, got a master's, and then I went to law school from there. But I didn't really like being an accountant <laughs> at all. Okay. And you know why I didn't? Why? Is that no one cared what you have to say. 
it was, I was working as an accountant. So just do the numbers. Just do the, do the work. But we'd have talk and conversations and it could be clear that no one was really that interested in any, and this was a very volatile time. You know, we're talking about the late 60s, early 70s, yeah. and when things were going on. Um, uh, and I can remember I was at the time when uh, Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King were both assassinated the same year in 1968. I'm working as an accountant and, and I, I didn't get a sense that the people I was working with understood the issues that I was concerned about. Now these were surprisingly in the, in the CPA business at the time, these were primarily Mormons. Uh, and so that was a whole cultural shock yeah, to me as yeah. well. Now these were decent people. And they, yeah, I, I mean, they were yeah. clearly decent people. It's just that their, their views of the world were substantially different. And yeah. so I, I had to adjust to that, yeah. how I, I saw people during that period of time. And so it was, it was important. But I'll tell you one aspect that I'm that when I was growing up, I got to play on these baseball teams, mm -hmm. and I was the only black kid on the team, or one or two kids at the time. But I said, when I grow up, I'm going to have my own baseball teams. And so and I you did. did. And I did. You did. I sponsored teams um, uh, for maybe 10 years or more in the Bay Ruth League here in Oakland and uh, Burris uh, Law, and it was a lot of fun. I had a manager that managed my. It was managed my teams. Mm -hmm. I would show up at the games and impart advice to the kids. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I've seen these kids who are all men now, and yeah. their parents, yeah. and I see them from time to time. And they were reminding me, Mr. Burris, man, I played on your baseball team, and and you know, a couple times we won championships. Sometimes we, you know, didn't do that well, but. It was a pleasure of mine to sponsor these teams, and, and the kids were very, very proud that they played on my team, and so I was happy about that. And that's a key part of things you still do today. I have the pleasure of being a part of how you mentor young men in Oakland. It is so good for me to, to, see, to see what you do, the men you bring together to mentor these young men. Why did you do that? And how did you do that? Well, I've always uh, understood that I had a responsibility to mentor people. Yeah. That was always clear. But I also had a, felt a greater need to help young kids because I, in, the, in the criminal law business where I was initially, I did a lot of work in juvenile, and I saw really bad things happen to kids. But I also saw that kids get into the system and they can't get out. And so, or, or, or they don't have mechanisms to help them get out. So yeah. I was always interested in helping kids. That's why I sponsored baseball team. You played on my baseball team, you had to get a little bit of philosophy along the That's way. Right. That's right. About you know, what you got to do, you got to yeah. grow up, da, da, da. And the baseball is just uh, not the end of the world. It's just part of it. I did the same thing on basketball teams. I did, you know, I sponsored basketball teams, girls soccer, uh, baseball. I did all that, when, yeah. uh, particularly when years gone by. And But I ultimately understood that you have to help kids with a philosophy of understanding the world at large and that there are real dangers out here for kids, particularly yeah. black kids, yeah. real dangers. And my objective is to keep them out of the criminal justice system. Yeah. They don't appreciate what it means mm -hmm. uh, to have a clean record. Yeah. And so part of my uh, effort is to give them some hope and some sense that there is a world out there, and you can be part of it, but you got to protect yourself along the way. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, maybe and you have 15 years. You got to know certain things. You got to know certain yeah. things. And part of what I tell uh, kids is that you have, a, you have a record. You keep your record in your back pocket. And that record gives you a gateway into this world. And if you put marks on it, bad marks on it, that gateway will close and close. And so I'm trying to keep the gateway open. Uh, for them. And so I've talked to various schools. I, I talk a lot about protecting yourself, how to deal with it. But I do think the program that you yeah. participated in the last few years, I've been doing that now for 12 years. And I got the idea uh, many years ago, I was participating in a, pro participating in a program okay. where at Merritt College, they had brought in all these African, uh, African American men uh, to mentor college kids and late high school kids. But it, and it was funded, uh, it was something that uh, Barbara Lee had funded mm -hmm. of American College. The funding left. And so I said, okay, well, I'll just do it. Yeah. And right. so I picked it up and I've expanded a little bit differently. 
by making sure that I had as many high school kids as possible. But more importantly, what, what I wanted was bring together a diverse set of men. Yeah. I didn't want men who were just lawyers or doctors. I wanted career people with jobs that were not necessarily well known. Yeah. And, and we've been able to do that. Uh, Some great men, yeah. very diverse. Very diverse. Uh, very interesting men. I, I really like that. So, because of this, and I'm going to, with, with my wife, we're expanding it. So, we're going to start a girls' profession now. There you go. Portion of this next year. Wow. And uh, we're looking forward to that. I've been thinking about it, and hopefully, uh, your wife will help us mm -hmm. and participate with Cheryl on this. But that you know, is a plan. Now, my wife is a teacher, so yeah. she's always been a teacher. Your so. wife is brilliant. Yes, Your brilliant. wife, Cheryl, is brilliant <laughs> yeah. and, and a talented, wonderful teacher. Well, she's been a law professor for many, many years, so yeah. that's our, our plan. Yeah. Plus, we have and one of the other, we have uh, we have grandchildren, yeah, and both on the East Coast and the West Coast, and so we spend a lot of time talking to them, seeing them, making sure they get a sense about who we are as, as and parents. Cheryl's kind of motherly mm -hmm. uh, with the grandkids, and so we we have we spend a lot of time working through that, and that that's very very important because, like it or not, we view ourselves as model role models. Yeah. We try to make sure everyone understood. You don't have to be a good person to be a lawyer. You don't have to be a, a doctor or anything of that nature. There are many many professions yeah. out here and career paths, but you got to put yourself in a place to take advantage of them, and and, and you cannot do that by getting caught up in the criminal justice system. And I yeah. told you, there are forces out here that will put you in the system, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And, and it can happen as quickly and as overnight as something. I, that I'm always surprised and disappointed to some extent how a minor event, a minor event <sighs> can mushroom into a big event and can ruin a person's life. Yeah. One of the things that we don't want to talk about cases, but the Oakland Riders case was motivated in large measure. The police because of the police, but more importantly, I could see the impact that misconduct by police can have on, on ordinary people's lives. And, and, that's it. and so there's been a whole range of those kind of things. And so yeah. I've uh, been fortunate that I get to get in the middle of all of that yeah. and, and represent people uh, for many, many years on, on a whole lot of different areas mm -hmm. that related to police. It's not just the stops, yeah. but it's jail, suicide, jail suicide, jail beatings, you know, on the street, shootings, of course, the whole gamut I've been involved in. I've been fortunate I get to do it, frankly. Yeah, we're going to wind down. And see, I have to do a whole month's worth of, of interviews to, to tap into all the things you've done and will do and, and that I'm so proud of. Uh, one of the things before we go, there is a, a list that you hand out to young men at the mentoring uh, meetings that uh, you, you, you let them see and read. Can you just talk briefly There's about There's a couple that? things I like to hand out to them. One is, and it's not original to me, but John Wooten, the coach at UCLA, mm -hmm. had this pyramid of success. Mm -hmm. And that pyramid of success is, is one that shows you what you have to do in order to participate and be a team player. And part of that is learning to be able to be agreeable, to get along, not always do it your way, figure out the best way to do it, and you go up this pyramid till you get to the top where you become a champion. Not necessarily a champion in the basketball sense, but a champion in life. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing I try to hand out. The other thing is I have I hand out is the whole question of what to do when stopped by the police. Yeah. And that's very important because these are all young men. They're, when I say young men, they're like teenagers, late yeah. teens, yeah. and they're gonna be men real soon. And I want them to understand that they have a responsibility to protect themselves and don't try to enforce your rights on the street themselves. Be, you can always do that at a later point, but I want you to live to go to the next day and not yeah. do something that ruins your life yeah. right then. Yeah. Because once you get into the criminal justice system, I tell them, there's collateral damage associated with that. Yeah. It can affect the school you can go to, affect the job you can get, can check whether you can go in the military, can check whether you want to be a police officer. And All these things can happen. As a whole. Yeah. And, and, and then you know, your family too. Yeah. So there's a lot of collateral damage. So I try to impart in the short time that I have with them, with the help of all you guys, yeah. is to impart as much wisdom as we can. But one of the things I most try to get kids to do is you have options. 
because yeah. a lot of what kids at that age, this high school age, they think they're going to be professional athletes. And I want them to understand that, yes, I'm not a dream killer here. Mm -hmm. You may yeah. be a professional yeah. athlete. Most don't, but you've got to have options. That's right. And I want you to start thinking about that option now. What else can you may want to do? And you'd be surprised. Oh, you've been there. Yeah. The imagination these kids have mm -hmm. when they start yeah. thinking about what they might like yeah. to do. You've got to bring kids out of their shell. Some of them have never been in a position where they've had to talk uh, yeah. amongst other guys yeah. or share their feelings <laughs> with other people. It's very drag difficult. It out. You yeah. Drag know, it out of them. You know, yeah. And that is really great. Now, now, the success of that, of course, is people like yourself and others who come, men who are willing to share their, their stories with them, Hell, I've learned a lot about the guys I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. And because, yeah. but, but I try to have people who sort of come from similar kind of backgrounds, working mm -hmm. class backgrounds, humble beginnings, because that's the story that these kids can relate to. Yes. If they know that John Burris really had blue collar jobs and he was a janitor for for a long time and worked in the fields, that's something the kids can relate to they because relate their to. parents are doing something like yeah. that, if if anything at all. So I'm trying to get the kids from the relationship point of view to appreciate that they too can do it. Yeah. And we want them to do it because look, I see kids who don't do it. Or yeah. I, I see the, the, these kids and I know what it looks like. And what I want to do is keep them out of that criminal justice system so that they can have a life, so they can take care of their families yeah. and take care, have kids who have go to school and, and, and blossom. And, and there are a lot of good good men out here yeah. that we don't talk about yeah. who are, are willing to help kids. I was in the Bay Ruth League for a number of years I talked about. These are great men mm -hmm. who were running these teams, who were sponsoring baseball. And, and it's like I grew up in an era with Willie Mays and Hank Aaron and you and Richie Allen, those yeah. guys out there. Oh. Those, are, those are those men that, that help those men. A lot of, and some of those players, they're out here now. Yeah. And so they help boys, you yeah. know, they help them. And sure, it's not on the same level it used to be because people are not playing basketball and football, and all of which is good. But there are everyday men there out there trying men. to help everyday kids be successful. And I sort of see that as my mission as well. We, we have to wrap up, but I'm gonna say on the record, John Burris, you are a giant of the legal field and a giant of a human being. Mm -hmm. And I say that from being around you, from calling you a friend and a brother, mm -hmm. I know. And some of the things you've just said, mm -hmm. a lot of people needed to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's a part of the fabric of who you are. It, is, it truly is. Right? And, and it's, and I applaud it. I mm -hmm. applaud it and you and Cheryl and all the people who work with you. And I thank you for taking time to come here to be a part of this. It's always a pleasure. Well, thank you. I'm much appreciated. It's yeah. always good to sit back and talk about these things and onward and That's forward. Right. Forward and on. Even greater things. Yeah. John Burris, thank you. Thank you. And, and I thank you for being with us. And I'll see you next time on Talk at the Town. <laughs>